The Haunted Firehouse My dad is a career firefighter, and I grew up in and around the firehouse. One of the stations in the town my dad works in is, according to my dad and just about every firefighter that's been in the station for a night or two, extremely haunted. The first story is from my dad, who is not one to be easily scared. The crew had returned from a late night run about three in the morning, and dad went into the computer room to write up the run report. He told me he felt this feeling like somebody was behind him. So he turned around in his chair and saw a man in a black top hat standing outside the window. The man turned and walked towards the front door. Thinking the man was there because it's technically designated a safe place, my dad jumped up and ran to the front door to find the guy. He was gone. But as dad went to walk back inside, the man appeared from around the corner and went through the front door of the station. He didn't open the door, which was locked and required a numerical code to open. He just walked through it and disappeared. My dad said he immediately went up to the bunk room and finished the report in the morning because he was just so freaked out. The next story comes from the medic my dad worked with. One night she was watching a horror movie with my dad at the station. At one of the jump scares, they both heard the front door get kicked and hit the inside wall, then slam shut. The medic, thinking my dad was playing a trick on her, turned to yell at him, only to see he was also white as a sheet. Both freaked out at this point, they hopped up to see if one of the other guys was fucking with them. My dad went to check the door, the medic went upstairs to see if anyone was missing. Everyone was upstairs asking who the hell had slammed the door. My dad came upstairs with no explanation as to how the hell that had happened. The next story comes from the battalion chief, who was at the time a lieutenant. This guy is scary, huge, and 100% no nonsense. He also absolutely refused to believe any ghost stories from this station. So, the guys dared him to stay downstairs until like 2 a.m. He did, and nothing out of the ordinary happened, which he felt validated his skepticism. Finally, 2 a.m. came around and he got up, turned off the TV, turned off the lights, got up to the second step, and heard a woman whisper in his ear, He's finally going to bed. Everybody else was in bed, and the only female on the department at the time was not on shift. The guy said they thought he was going to collapse from fright when he got to the top of the stairs. It took 20 minutes to calm him down so they could get the story out of him. He said he felt the breath from the woman speaking in his ear. He still barely talks about it, and if he does, he gets visibly freaked out. But by far the most interesting story from the station is this one. So each shift has their own refrigerator, and they get locked as each shift leaves because, well, firefighters steal food from each other. C shift was known to steal food constantly. They'd eat entirely from the other two shifts' fridges, forcing A shift and B shift to constantly go grocery shopping. Well, apparently the entity, ghost, or whatever you want to call it, got tired of C shift stealing everyone's food, and one morning when A shift came in to relieve C shift, they found C shift's refrigerator and freezer wide open with all of the food in the trash can. No one is quite sure how it happened, but both shifts swear on it. Other stuff would happen. Pass devices would go off in the middle of the night for no reason. Boots would be pulled out of bunker pants, which is infuriating to firefighters. They could hear the workout equipment being used at all hours. Occasionally see a man standing in the base staring at the trucks, only for him to disappear. Weird stuff like that. It's a really cool firehouse, but it certainly has that feeling like you're not alone. I don't think the ghost had much to do with fucking up Sea Shift's fridge. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. But either way, they deserved it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like some firehouse justice. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's the spirit of vengeance is what that is. Mm, definitely. <laughs> but the other stuff is interesting and actually kind of reminds me, um, you know, there was a period where I was intending to work on a book about first responders and I just never did. Mm. Um, for various reasons. I started, I, that's not true. I started on it and then I just had too much shit going on at the time. I just kind of left it. Mm. But one guy I spoke to, he was a firefighter in Calgary and he had the same feeling he had, he was, uh, you know, he'd be writing up reports or working at night and you'd hear people walking outside. You'd hear uh, noises, things would move in the bunkhouse. And so it, it's just sort of like, I don't know if it's a firehouse thing or if just because there are always people in the building, you notice it more. Yeah. I like a haunted firehouse. Bear with me. Okay. I'm reaching. <laughs> yes, there are others. Okay. In fact, here in Sheffield, our old fire station is now a museum. 
and it was derelict for decades. But it was uh, it was bought by the uh, emergency services to act as a as a museum. And since it opened, it has been haunted. Now, strangely, the ghost that lives there is supposed to be dressed as a sailor. Seems lost or looking for a good time, depending. Now, that's the thing. So at first, when it started being reported, people were sort of saying, oh, people are seeing a sailor. Until some archivists did some digging and noticed that when the fire station opened in the early 1800s, firemen's uniforms in those days were modelled on sailors. Oh, shit. So it would seem that what people are actually seeing is an old fireman from that period whose clothing reminded people of something else, but it's what he would have been wearing at that particular era. And now you can actually do an all-night ghost hunt there. They do them fairly regularly at the museum. Oh, cool. Are, are you? Is that something you would try at some point? It depends. The price fluctuates wildly. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. I've seen it advertised at £25, and I've seen it advertised for considerably more. More than 25, oh, unless they're doing a catered meal or something and you get, you know, a handy or, or something like that. I, I'm not paying more than 25. No, no. So uh, who knows? It, it, it's one of those, it's it's now because it's become popular, it's all, obviously the price has gone up. Good Lord, of course. It's like storm watching in Tofino. As soon <laughs> as it became popular, it was all fucked up. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things you would think, well, why would a firehouse be haunted? Because if if they they dealt with anything, the tragedies or the deaths would occur outside of the firehouse. Unless, of course, it was a fireman or a fireperson or firewoman who had died on duty and was tethered to where they bunked down, perhaps. I was thinking that. What if, you know... Obviously, when you work in extreme situations, you're around death quite a bit. It becomes relatively commonplace. Mm. And I wonder if it's not possible that, you know, people who are experiencing unexpected or traumatic or, or violent death, if they attach to first responders because they're there. Mm. And maybe they just follow them back to the, the firehouse and that's where they stay. You know, yeah. they just keep hanging around because it's someplace stable and safe and this is what they know. I mean, who knows? Like, obviously we're all always speculating with this shit, but maybe your, your memory of the outside world shrinks. Mm. And so you end up after a while, this is, this is all, you know, is this firehouse. Yeah. Yeah. And as well in Sheffield, you would expect them to be seen in other places because obviously during the, the blitz of 1940, we lost several firemen that night with buildings collapsing on them and, and some were killed. Oh, okay. A couple of fire trucks were actually hit by German bombs. Um, so uh, you would expect them to be wandering around the town rather than something not connected with that particular event haunting the old firehouse. But Sheffield's very good. I've lived in Sheffield uh, several decades now, and we are currently on our third fire station since I've lived here. They, they, they oh. like to build one every sort of 15 years because they built one and go, oh, it's brilliant. And then realised that where they built it, it was smack in the middle of town. So it was adding like 20 minutes to journeys because the fire engines <laughs> just couldn't get oh, out of there to course. come through the town centre traffic. At rush so right. if you have a fire at rush hour, hard lines. Yikes. I, I, I wonder if maybe they built it out of shitty concrete like everything else. <laughs> no, they probably did, but it's falling <laughs> yeah, down fair, now. Okay. It's over so in the rain. Yeah, I'm aware of, now I'm aware of four separate buildings that have been fire stations in Sheffield. One is obviously the the current one, which is easier to to us to get out to help people. But um, the two other two were in the two were in the city centre, and one's the other opposite side of town. So I, I I love that your first word of choice there was escape. You stopped short of saying it, but it was you know, easier to escape. <laughs> and I think, given what we've just read, that is the appropriate term. Well, perhaps perhaps my mind yeah. was was searching for the correct word in that situation. See Discovery Plus, we're always thinking. <laughs>